Hello, welcome to Breakfast All Day. I'm Matt here with Christy and Alonzo. Uh, this current movie, Super Intelligence, uh, proves that I am the only one super intelligent enough to have missed it. Ha <laughs> ha! But well, you uh, were not assigned a review of it like the rest exactly. of us were. Exactly. Correct. Um, <laughs> I assigned myself nothing. Uh, I take responsibility for nothing, but Christy and Alonzo will tell you about this movie. It will. So uh, Melissa McCarthy is the most average person on earth, which from the description alone to tell you how misguided this movie is, because making Melissa McCarthy the most average person on earth <laughs> is in no way the best use of her many talents. Um, this is a movie directed by her husband, a Ben Falcone film, the four most terrifying words you will see on your television <laughs> this Christmas season. Um, yeah, she is milk toast and nice and she is so nice that she quits her job as a tech executive in seattle to go do things like volunteer at animal adoptions and then one day this supercomputer becomes sentient and tries to decide whether to destroy all of humanity or save it and he's or enslave it or enslave it yeah there's that option as well choice C. And um, he decides he's going to monitor the activities of the most basic average person on the planet in order to determine over the course of like three days whether or not to do this. It's And the voice that comes to her through her many appliances, like her TV and her rice cooker, is that of James Corden. And it comes to her like that to soothe her because James Corden is her favorite celebrity because of course he is because she's the most boring person on the planet. Of course, she would like the most safe and accessible and non-threatening celebrity on the planet. Mm. So um, it is the kind of high concept premise that you would see in an 80s movie like Electric Dreams, you know, where the computer like tries to see what makes people tick. Um, but what this means in the course of the movie is that it just kind of follows this boring person around and she does boring things and it strands an incredible supporting cast of actors who get to do nothing but like stand around and also be boring. So you have like Brian Tyree Henry in this thankless role as her best friend. He essentially exists. So she has somebody to talk on the phone to. And you have Bobby Cannavale as her ex, the one who got away, who was a professor. And the two of them have like less than no chemistry with each other. I mean, they have the chemistry of like, <laughs> as I wrote my review for Ebert, like two strangers who are standing next to one another in line to buy tickets for the space needle like there is nothing there is no evidence of any kind of shared emotional history between these people and he's weird dude he's like his his primary character trait is that he is a ken griffey jr fanboy which leads to this incredibly awkward cameo from ken griffey jr at a Mariners game. And then you have Jean Smart as this like Hillary Clinton version of the president. And she, again, gets to do nothing but like kind of dress up like Hillary Clinton and pretend to be the president. It's just really incredibly blah and bland and like aggressively so. Um, one of the worst parts of it is that we have to listen to Melissa McCarthy not once but twice break out into one week by the bare oh, naked right. ladies yeah. which has been stuck in my head all week and i'm miserable it's it comes and goes i wake up with it and then i get something else but then it comes back to me and then i got a picture of melissa mccarthy singing to it and it's not nearly as adorable as she thinks it is ben falcone just has no feel for comedy and he keeps they keep making movies together and whatever movie she's in there's always this obligatory cameo for him and there is here too he's in he's got a supporting role here too there's just the thing that makes Melissa McCarthy interesting is, is when she plays these characters who are dangerous and weird and will take us to dangerous, weird places. And she's you can't stop watching her in those kinds of roles. Even in a film like Spy, where she's a little bit meek, you know, there's a spark to her that makes her interesting and makes her evolution interesting. But Ben Falcone is no Paul Feig. <laughs> hey, hey, Christy. Hey, hey, Christy. It's been... One week since you looked at me. <laughs> and she like does the dance. <laughs> chicken to China, the Chinese, Chinese chicken, chicken is so bad. Oh, I fucking hate that song. Like I always Okay, I don't did. make films, but if I did, there'd be a samurai. Yes, <laughs> oh yes, yes. Ugh. It's um, the worst. Why are you guys punishing all of our watchers and listeners <laughs> by putting that song in their head? 
<laughs> Look, we you, we had to go through what they do too. Yeah. Uh, I hate this movie, but not as much as you did, but I did <laughs> hate it. Um, yeah, I, like I, I think that she and Ben Falcone performing together are funny. And I think they have a, a fun interplay with each other, but God, I wish he would stop directing her movies and I wish they would stop writing them. He, they did not write this one. The guy no. who wrote The Boss wrote this one, Steve something. Mallory. Uh, so yeah, Steve Mallory. This is a terrible script. Because you're right, these uh, I, I quoted Into the Woods in my review because these characters are not good, they're not bad, they're just nice. And that's <laughs> yeah. not interesting at all. No, and it's like, no. I, I mean, Bobby Cannavale and Melissa McCarthy have the chemistry of actors who are as talented as the two of them are just being in a scene together. But as mm -hmm. far as like a relationship history or any of that kind of stuff, none, like none no zero. spark, no. And yeah, you're right. I, this movie kept reminding me of movies that I liked better. Like I was reminded of Electric Dreams. Mm -hmm. I was reminded of, for, I, I just had to watch or not had to, but I just got to watch uh, The World's End again. Oh, for, I love that movie. Yeah, for Who Shot You? And like, that's got that whole scene at the end where like, you know, where, where Simon Pegg is expected to sort of defend and explain the human race. He's like, fuck off, you know? <laughs> and I, I kind of wanted him to show up in this movie to tell the James Corden AI the same thing. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, I think Brian Tyree Henry finds these little moments of absurdity that are fun to watch. But for the most part, yeah, this movie doesn't do much with him. Gene Smart is just sort of there to give glare, which she does brilliantly, but still, come on. Um, yeah, this is a pretty much a waste of time. And I, I as, as much as I like Ben, I, I don't mind Ben Falcone on camera. And I think, I think he and McCarthy have fun interplay. Please stop making movies. This is the fourth one they have done together now. And they're all her worst films. They really are. And there are more in the pipeline from them. Uh, if you take a look at IMDb. I mean, uh, I just don't know who keeps saying yes to this. Like they don't make money. They're not critically acclaimed. Like there's nothing, I, I mean, besides, think, besides the fact that she's an enormous star and yeah. can, has the clout to make that happen. I just think when I see a movie like this, which clearly has a big budget and a big cast, like mm. all the little good movies that could have been made for that money. <laughs> it makes me people, sad. People clearly want her enough that they will, they will take him as part of the package. But yeah, it is it, like somebody should sit down and be like, you know what, this movie was great. And you know, like here, Spy and you know, uh, can you ever forgive me? And, and you know, rattle off all these films that she's done that are great. And like, and you know what they all have in common? Ben Falcone didn't direct <laughs> any of them. But also making her, making her nice is not her strong suit. That's not no, what's interesting about her no. at all. And also, not only can he not direct comedy, he also can't direct action. And so the whole like build up to will the machine or won't the machine destroy humanity, there is zero no stakes, tension, zero yeah. tension at all. Everyone's so wishy-washy and nicey-nice. There's never any question as to what's going to happen here. Yeah, like there's that one job interview scene early on where the two people uh. interviewing her are, are awful. And that's at least like some salt in the you know some sand in the oyster like some mm -hmm. something to provide something that isn't just like another blandly nice person which is what this movie is full of also i gotta say as as a middle-aged white woman myself i find the fact that like they chose a middle-aged white woman as the ideal person to follow as a subject of humanity totally mm -hmm. boring uh, yeah, that that whole me, you know, most average median person like is never explained very well, and just seems like a very dodgy premise to begin with. So, anyway, <laughs> I said one. There is one line that <laughs> made me laugh. I'm not going to ruin it for you in case, okay. God forbid, you like forget that you left HBO Max on and it's on <laughs> your television. Um, there's a line. The person who comes to Brian Tyree Henry as his favorite celebrity. That's the only uh, bit that was funny. I gave it a three. I had a few moments of, huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. The thing that we all hate. Can, can I mention this really fast? I know we're kind of running over here. There are all these pop culture references and then the movie like can't just have a pop culture reference. It has to then explain to you what that pop culture oh, reference God, was yes. over and over and over again. So there's like the, Bum bum from Law and Order, mm -hmm. and then Melissa there's McCarthy has game to go. Show. Right, Melissa McCarthy has to go. That's the bum bum from Law and Order, and then there's like a tic tac toe thing, and this during one of their conference meetings, it says, "Shall we play a game?" Someone goes, "I know what that is. That's from War Games." It's like, ah, no shit. 
Oh, and, and just uh, even the running joke about James Corden, like they have to keep talking about James Corden. And it's just like, oh my God, if you had just let it be the thing, that'd be one thing. But you have to, literally, we, we're going to have a conversation now about how he got a, he won a Tony for, for One Man, Two Governors. Like, shut up, movie. Yeah. We get it. Oy. There's so much hand-holding. It's the worst. Anyway, um, we don't like this movie. It's, we no. gave it a two. Yes. It's on HBO Max if you must, but please don't. Um, <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Like this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, check us out uh, on the social media at BeFastAllDay. And uh, look at our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFastAllDay. Uh, TV recaps, other fun stuff coming up. So hope you'll join us there. In the meantime, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.